got to have the heart of a gambler to stake your fortune on mining. That's the whole history of this town of Cobalt. This place has lived and almost died many times in the endless cycle of boom and bust. I guess I'm a bit of a gambler too. Six years ago, my wife and I moved to Cobalt on the roll of a dice, and this is the house we ended up living in. At that time, Cobalt was in a depression because all the mines were closing. But we had a hunch that this town held something exciting for our future. You gotta be a believer to stick around here when unemployment is hovering at 25%. The local kids call this pogey bench. This is where a generation of sidelined workers sit back and watch the world go by. The town has worked really hard to get over its dependence on mining. But now with a giant staking rush going on in Tomogamy just a half hour down the road, people are once again talking that the glory days are going to return. So, these old runes here, this is pretty much where everything in Cobalt got rolling, eh? Yeah, that's right, about 19.3. So, uh, looks, looks like some old Aztec ruin or crusader castle, something from history. Do you think the town of Cobalt is history? No, I think there's still a bright future here. A lot of opportunity here left, based on some of the more recent exploration events. Gino Cittaroni's family had been mining in Cobalt for three generations. Gino's a geologist, a prospector, and a promoter. He keeps the faith when a lot of other promoters have moved on. I think what we got to do is capitalize on this tomogamy rush, and hopefully there's an announcement out of tomogamy uh, in the very foreseeable future, which would definitely spill off into the cobalt area. Right. I've heard all the rumors. I've heard it right down to the amount of tons that they're going to be mining out and how they're going to do it. Now, I don't know how realistic this is, but uh, how is that going to affect cobalt? Oh, certainly. Um, if there is a major find in tomogamy, uh, it's no different than what we've seen out of Sherman Mine. If you had 300 plus jobs, uh, I could see, for instance, the town of Cobalt, or at least the, the, the people of the town of Cobalt will immediately gain by, by new jobs. Um, certainly, I lived through the uh, part of the Hemlo gold rush, and um, all you have to do is take a look at the town of Marathon, how it grew just, it was nuts there for, for several years, and, and still doing very well over there. Um, there's no reason why that can't happen here. On a warm autumn day, the good citizens of Cobalt have gathered here in the old vaudeville theater to uh, come and take a look at their past. When I watch these old films, I get a sense that all the exaggeration and embellishment that I've heard about what this town was like, well, that it's true. <laughs> This town came to life in a spectacular way. Almost overnight, Cobalt seemed to burst onto the world stage. And any kid today can tell you the story of how this town was founded. All right, now, does anybody here know who discovered silver and Cobalt? Me? Yeah, you. Well, I, I, well, I think it's somebody LaRose. Right? Um, somebody LaRose. They say that he threw a pickaxe at a fox, and he missed the fox, and it went into a rock, and it split the rock, and then he found silver. How much silver? Was there lots? Or is there just a little bit of silver? Oh, there's lots. <laughs> there was lots, because it went all over the world. You never let truth get in the way of a good story in a mining town. People love to think that Fred LaRose discovered a massive silver vein just by luck. That might be, but what we do know is that Fred LaRose was a blacksmith. He worked for the railway, and this was his shop. And we also know that his discovery led to the wildest boom Ontario had ever seen. Until the cobalt boom, sleepy Ontario paid little attention to the kind of wild west mining booms. Suddenly investors were coming up from New York, Chicago and London and they all wanted to go to a little mining camp in northern Ontario. 
and within a few short years, Cobalt was a toast of the New York Times. Hey, we had our own pro hockey team, streetcar system, opera hall, and 104 operating silver mines. Even the Prince of Wales decided to come up and check it out. Toronto? Isn't that where you go to catch a train to go to Cobalt? Most people don't realize that the wealth of southern Ontario came from the hard rock mines of the north. The Cobalt boom transformed Toronto into the center of buccaneer mining promotion. Take Sir Henry Pellet, for example. The money he mined out of Cobalt, he went down to Toronto and built Castle Loma. But old Henry's wealth didn't last. And neither did the wealth in the early Cobalt mines. That's been the whole history of this place. You discover something, and it's gone. John R. Hunt, you've been commentating on the North for 40 years. You've heard the rumors. You've seen the busts come, and and the, uh, the always the prospect that there's going to be another mine. Do you think the rumors that are going around now are going to lead to anything? Well, probably. The uh, Tomogamy area is... Uh, has a lot of potential, but I'm a little cynical because if they find a new mine, uh, and I hope they do, it'll create a lot of jobs for 10, 20 years, and then judging by past performance, no one will think about the future and we'll be right back in the same mess in 20 years' time. I had one of the leading citizens of Cobalt meet me on the street and say, we don't want you talking about anything of this nonsense. Cobalt's a mining town, always has been, always will be. But where the hell are the mines now? It's not over. The mines will be back. Hmm. There's still silver in them barrios. Chuck? If ever there was a true believer in Cobalt, it's Helen Colhane. She was born and raised in this town, and she's always believed that this town is going to boom again. Actually, my teenagers... One of my, my son, I believe it was, was sitting on boogie bench. And uh, some guy came up and was talking to them and said, don't worry, something really great's coming to this town. Who was he? Went up to, I don't know who he was. He did, Tim didn't know. But, Just someone uh, coming through town? Who... Yeah. Tim, of course, yeah. struck up the, the good old cobalt conversation with this strange person in town. And he said, don't you worry, son. And he said, some good things coming to this town. Huh. Well... There's a lot of rumors going about now. Yeah, I'm hearing them. And there's been rumors before, but this time everybody's saying something's happening, something's happening. Do you think? Can't you feel it? Everybody knows something's here. Everybody who's in the know knows that there is something here. It is not all gone. And there might... I love my silver, but I maybe it's something else. In the early 1990s, we watched the helicopters circling overhead every day, dragging their magnetic sensors. Everyone knew it was from the giant company Falconbridge. We got our hopes up that maybe, maybe there was still silver in these hills. But Falconbridge never played their hand. And now everyone's talking about the rumors of tomogamy. But hey, what if the find was here? Drive from town. Some of the richest silver mines in the world were found right here along Kerr Lake. But those miners were digging for silver, and the silver never went very deep. What lay below that, they never bothered to check. I really think, uh, and I still do believe, that there's a real, very real chance for a base metal deposit here in the Cobalt area. Um, there's certainly uh, exploration efforts for deep uh, base metal exploration in this area. Uh, be it copper, lead, zinc, that seems to be the, the thing in the area. Yes, this is, uh, you see the survey as they carved the uh, thing in the... So this is the old post. That, that's a survey. That's the, for the survey. Okay. That's a claim post. The other old claim posts have wrong, rotted away, and gone by. John Gore has been prospecting in cobalt all his life. He started as a little boy picking silver from the waste dumps of the mines, and he's never tired of looking for the mother load. Here we are in the cobalt camp, pretty much in its shadow, in a place that's been picked over hundreds of times by prospectors. Yeah. For silver. For silver. But now, you figure there's still riches lying right underneath us. Base metal. There is a good, very high potential in this area. Hmm. <laughs> One of the main reasons that I'm down in here is that if you're going to find mines or ore bodies, you go where mines have already been found. 
elephant country. Yeah, that old saying that if you're looking for elephant, you go to elephant country. They lifted the caution here in 1990. The day they lifted it, I was in here thinking. Now, what kind of companies would be interested in this turf? Well, Falcon Bridge, Inmet. But I mean, there's been lots of rumors about companies like Falcon Bridge, the yeah. helicopters flying over. Right, Charlie. Have you seen any of that? Two weeks ago, there was a helicopter flying with the bird underneath it. If you talk to mining analysts down on Bay Street, they'll tell you if a big company's coming in here, it's because they believe that there's something fairly significant to be found. If I was to hear something coming down the road here in the next uh, few months to, let's say, next uh, year for the cobalt area, you know, that, that would be an, a, a major initiative for exploration or, and or mining. Uh, I'm not surprised by that. I can, I can definitely see some, uh, some ex exploration dollars, some major exploration dollars spent in the cobalt camp, and, and they may or may not find something. That's right. just it. It's a, it's a real gamble, but so I think there's a good chance. Even the majors are playing the hunches then. Oh, yes. There certainly has to be a bit of a gambler there, too. Yeah. Okay. Nobody official is going to say anything. Do you want to know what I've heard? I've heard that Falcon Bridge has signed a letter of intent with this company, Igneco Eagle, to do deep drilling in the old cobalt mines. Hey, I haven't heard it at Bingo Hall. In 45, G58. I-17, I-18, and 42. I'm as close as I always am. <laughs> We're checking out the rumors that uh, cobalt's going to happen again. Wouldn't that be nice? I guess so. Have you been hearing anything? Well, just that Falcon is going to do some drilling. Yeah. Supposed to. Bag of nickel. Yeah, they know the base metals are here, and they're going to go deep and find them. Would you figure Agnico knows what's down there? Oh, I think Agnico knows more than they're saying, that's for sure. It seems to me that the model that people keep talking about is, you know, the way Texas Gulf found Kid Creek and Timmins. And uh, when they did that, when they drilled that, they didn't want anybody knowing they were drilling. I mean, they went in and they drilled it very quietly. They brought in guys from out of town. They didn't want any of the locals. Like, they wouldn't want any people in Cobalt all talking about what they were doing. Do you think that, that that's the kind of thing that we could see? Sure, that, that's, that is a very real possibility here. Um, a lot of companies don't want uh, the local people to know what they're doing. Uh, to have a major deposit found by accident or uh, at least kept secretly uh, is not is nothing new in the mining industry. And there's an old saying that uh, that a mining camp is built on its grave. It's uh, and it is because every time that you remove a ton of ore, there's that much less that you're getting that much closer to the end. So yeah. there is an end coming, whether it be cobalt or Sudbury or Timmins or whatever. It's mining is. But uh, we've seen yeah. the end, and now you're saying we're oh, yeah. coming back yeah. from the but grave. We haven't seen the end. Yeah. Really. See this penny? It's 98% copper. Copper is one of the hottest metals in the world right now. Geez, it's getting too expensive to make pennies out of them anymore. Next year, the mint's going to have to use zinc. Instead of putting a lot of hope in gold and diamonds coming out of tomogamy, I think we should be looking at the copper that's going to be coming out of our own backyard. But me, I don't really care which way the penny falls. I love this place. I wouldn't leave it for the world. You know, 